This Pecha Kucha is an introductory tour of some of the benefits that Wikipedia can bring to your teaching. I'm Claire Thompson and I'm a Digital Education Consultant in the Office for Digital Learning at Ulster University. Together with wider perspectives, I'll integrate some of my own personal experiences of using Wikipedia. Using it for teaching can be potentially controversial. Many of you listening to this will be sceptical for many reasons. However, I hope you will stick with me for the next six minutes to get an idea of the opportunities for both enthusiasts and sceptics for its use in education. Firstly, Wikipedia is only one project under the umbrella of the Wikimedia Foundation. The Foundation provides the essential infrastructure for freely available information. People do not get paid for adding information and there are over 200,000 volunteer contributors. However, the majority of these are in one demograph. So this then is one of the ways that students can contribute. They can bring diversity with gender, language, topics and level of education. This allows for discussion around power and privilege and how access to knowledge in the form of books and journals is afforded to us in higher education. The advantages for them include developing digital and information literacy skills, critical analysis, language, deepen their knowledge of course content and real world experience of communication and feedback with editors, as well as writing for a new audience. There are many different approaches to take. An entry level activity would be to introduce Wikipedia as a class discussion, live or in a forum. How is it perceived? How have teachers referred to it in their classes previously? You could divide the class into for and against for debate. Secondly, you could get students to critique an article relevant to their course content. These could be assigned or self-selected. Was it accurate in their view? Were the citations reliable? Was anything missing or even misrepresented? Were images included? And if yes, what did they contribute? Going further, students could actually edit an article they could do this with or without creating their own account. They could do some basic proofreading and correcting or reword overly complex sentences or even add citations to improve article credibility using the tool Citation Hunt. Many articles consist of text and would benefit from the addition of images and the most straightforward method for doing this is through Wikimedia Commons. They could first do a search for appropriate images and add the most applicable. If there are not relevant sources within the Commons or existing resources are outdated, students could add their own photographs. If you are introducing this in September, it would coincide with the International Initiative of Wiki Loves Monuments. This would bring a competitive element to the activity. Another way for students to add miss missing multimedia resources is to create their own diagrams or charts. This can be done in commonly used packages such as Microsoft PowerPoint or Google Slides. Exported diagrams in the format of an image can then be uploaded into Wikimedia Commons under a Creative Commons license. There are many language versions of Wikipedia which contain fewer articles than the English version Therefore, students on a language course or students whose first language is not English may choose to translate existing articles from one version to another. However, depending on course outcomes, you may ask the students to create a new article. For this, students do need to have an account and also have made 10 prior edits. There are several sources of help to identify missing articles, such as the Women in Red project. My final example is for anyone interested in contributing datasets to the Wiki Data Project. This example on screen highlights just one case from the University of Edinburgh. Here, MSc level students in data science for design imported the survey of Scottish Witchcraft Database. Students are invariably amazed by how fast their contributions are viewed and also by the speed of change. Very quickly they find their content may be reworded, restructured or even flagged for removal if it's considered too close to the wording of sources. 
No plagiarism software can have that impact. Hopefully this has piqued your interest in using Wikipedia and I've ordered the approaches from easiest to difficult. However, there is help there. I began my journey with the University of Edinburgh and used their resources to design my module. From there, I reached out to the Wikimedia UK organisation who sent me useful guides to share with students. They also gave me contact details for Wikimedia Community Ireland which opened up the opportunity for Rebecca O'Neill to come and deliver a Getting Started workshop for students. They really appreciated the detailed background of Wikipedia, including all the challenges of maintaining one of the world's largest, open, collaboratively curated sources of information. If you search for the titles of these two resources, you'll find a whole wealth of case studies for more inspiration. I wanted to end with some numbers of a few of the articles created within the module I did with third year students. Rather than an essay that only myself and one other read, these articles have been viewed literally thousands of times since either September 2018 or January 2019. Don't hesitate to contact me with any questions or ideas if you would like to explore any of these possibilities. My email is c.thompson at ulster.ac.uk and my Twitter handle is at slowtech2000. Thank you.